if you're lucky enough to know someone who is living to be 100 years old, it's great. But what is it like knowing somebody who's 104 almost? Well, it's it's incredible, first of all, to think that someone had been around for 100 years. But every day after that 100 year mark, you just really know that each moment, each breath is really a gift. So you have to enjoy every second of it. And remember that there's so much wisdom within these people who are centenarians and you know all of our elderly. And we tend to take that for granted. So if you get a chance, any of your viewers get a chance to spend some time with someone who's you know, lived 90, 100 years, just relish in every second of it. So why is it something that you decided to write about? Well, you know, the book itself originally was just going to be about Lucille and I's friendship, and it was kind of going to be about her life. And she did know I was writing a book about her life and gathering information when we were together. But I really didn't fully appreciate what that book was going to be about or what the, the whole purpose of writing that book was until she had passed away. What are some of the biggest lessons that you think you learned from Lucille? Well, there were there were several. Uh, when I actually started writing um, Age to Perfection, How to Thrive to 100, Happy, Healthy, and Wise, I had interviewed several people over 100. Lucille and I just hit it off. And they all had very similar things that, that they attributed to their long and healthy lives. You know, having good friends and being social, having faith. Now, it didn't matter what denomination they were. But every one of them had a, a higher power that they kind of gave things up to. And I think that was so important because it helped manage their stress levels as well. And then really from Lucille, it was really about perspective for me. Uh, I was a third generation workaholic, wore that 60 hours a week like a badge of honor. And really just having someone who had had lived such a long life seen so many things and being able to say we need to look at this the big picture not just what's happening in the moment you know if you think about about her life and the in the people you know of that age she was born the year the titanic sank and she came to the united states in the middle of the depression and what a time to, to come to the United States. And she had a, a locket around her neck and a suitcase in her hand, and she put herself through nursing school. And this was a time when, you know, women, single women of that age that were old enough to go to college and then thinking more on the career lines, you know, what can I do and how can I contribute to society? And, and all of these things that she did, if we think about them through the lens of what it was like then, it's it's so incredible you know now we don't think a lot about you know women living on their own or women putting themselves through school it, it's just kind of uh, a natural occurrence for us but back then it was it was incredible that she did this you know left her country came to a new country by herself and and made a life 